it's impossible to avoid failure. Sometimes I ask myself, why do we still fail even though we have the answers? See, the Heavenly Father has left us a book. And in that book is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This book teaches us how to live. It gives us the answers that we need to survive in this world. The Bible is a powerful book. And I believe the reason why we fail, although we have the answers, is because if you don't live by the answer that the Heavenly Father has given you, then the only other thing to do is fail. That's just the honest truth about it. See, one thing I learned about failure is this. It will happen. But it's up to us of how we respond to it. The only thing we can control in this world is how we respond to certain things that may happen in our life. And the only other thing that we know for sure of is one day we're going to leave this world. So how we respond to life itself will determine where we spend eternity. See, the enemy wants you to live a fast life. He wants you to Forget about the journey and arrive instantly at the destination. Simply because if you don't have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding before you get to the destination, you won't have the tools to succeed in where God is taking you. That's why God is patient with you because he knows you're going to fail along the way. But he's saying this to you today. If you trust his plan, he's going to work your failures into his plan so that you bring glory to his name. See, here's what happened. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Every single thing you've been through is attached to what God is calling you to do, even your failure. We all going to fail sometimes. That's just a part of life, but it's how we respond to the failure. Will we learn from our mistakes or continue to make the same mistake? Because at the end of the day, that's what the enemy wants you to do. Think about it. The enemy hasn't changed his strategy even since the beginning of time. The enemy still tries to manipulate people in different shapes and forms. And the sad truth about it is the enemy can use people that's not trying to change. Sometimes those people are in our inner circle. And you know what the world say, bad company corrupts good character. Sometimes the people we keep around influence our failures and mistakes. And once again, it leads to isolation. That's why the heavenly father don't want you to be around a whole bunch of people, especially when he's at the beginning of your deliverance. When he's working on you so that you can serve a greater purpose and fulfill the will of God through Lord Jesus by your faith. The reason why the Heavenly Father will isolate us is so he can minimize the failure. Because we can be influenced by people and also 
when you're around too many of the wrong people, they may peer pressure you into doing things that you're being delivered from. See, the enemy wants you to go back to an old lifestyle. But new wine can't be put in old bottles. See, when God starts to work on you, especially when you are a chosen vessel, the Heavenly Father has handpicked you. When he's working on you, everything must be made brand new. And we must step into the newness of life with the new mindset. See, everything that you may have done in life, when you give it back to the Heavenly Father, when you give your life to the Heavenly Father, it becomes a testimony. And the only way we can develop wisdom is that we make foolish mistakes. But we got to learn from everything we go through. See, it's about discipline. We must have discipline in order to continue in this life because death is promised and failures will happen. But how we respond to life itself will be the very thing that leads to a bad outcome or a good outcome. But it all starts up here in your mind. The more you think about the words of God, the wisdom that he tries to teach us with, the more you start to realize this is how we fight the enemy. We fight the enemy with the word of God. Why did God say Walk by faith, not by sight. I could tell you why. Because when you start to pay attention to your own life, that's how the devil is able to manipulate you into making you believe you will never amount to nothing. See, the enemy wants you to believe that you are a failure and that's all you're going to be. But that's not true. Let's not pay attention to our own lives. Let's pay attention to the one who created a better life for us. And that's Lord Jesus. He who keep his focus on him, the Lord, shall keep his thoughts in perfect peace. See, Sometimes we can pay attention to the wrong things and it can make us feel terrible as people. It could put us in a very dark place because we might be paying attention to too many of the wrong people on social media or the television. Or we might be listening to too many of the wrong people, the wrong influencers. Whatever people is talking about, you know, corrupt communication. And when we start to allow that stuff to affect our own lives, we begin to lose sight on what really matters. And what really matters is that Lord Jesus laid his life down so that People like Barabbas can be free. Remember when Lord Jesus was on trial and they and, and, and Pilate asked the crowd, who should he free? And the crowd all screamed, Barabbas. Now, this person did a whole bunch of crimes. He made a whole bunch of mistakes and failed at life. But yet he was set free. Why is that? Why come someone that's an enemy of God was set free? I could tell you why. Because we're saved by grace. And when you become a believer, knowing that you're saved by grace, 
That's what transforms us from the inside out. That's what causes us to want to become better people. Because now God has given you an opportunity knowing that death is promised. But we must die to live. See, the enemy wants you to chase after things of this world so you can waste time. So you can skip past the journey to get to the destination. See, the destination is to know where will we spend eternity when this life is over. That's why it's so important to remember the journey. And let pride go. We must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because God is showing us how to live. And he wants us to testify of his goodness. The things he delivered us out of. Because sometimes when people come to the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Father make their life better, they forget about where they come from. They look down upon people. They don't even testify of the goodness of God. We got to remember, y'all, because that person might not be living for the Heavenly Father like you are now. But guess what? You was once in his shoes. Guess what? We was once in the shoes of Barabbas. But Lord Jesus laid his life down so even someone like him can be set free. That's why we're saved by grace, y'all, because God could have destroyed all wickedness. But instead of destroying us completely, because what the word say, he who will lose his life shall save it. But he who tried to save his life shall lose it. So instead of the heavenly father destroying us completely, he gave us a new heart through Lord Jesus. He gave us a way a truth, and a life through Lord Jesus. He gave us a new identity. Instead of destroying us completely, he gave us a new mind. He gave us a clean spirit. That's the spirit of Lord Jesus that lives in the inside of us. That's the power of God's grace. God wants to set you free. And our perspective on life isn't about what we see. It's about what we don't see. See, you didn't know that the Heavenly Father was working in the background. He was making things work in your favor when the enemy tried to take you out, when the enemy tried to kill you, when the enemy wanted you to die in sin. God was working on our behalf through Lord Jesus. So we can finally know truth. Instead of listening to all these lies that the devil got going on in this world from the beginning of time till now. All the enemy wants you to do is fall into deception. And he wants you to be prideful so when the Heavenly Father deliver you out of a certain situation, you won't help somebody else get out of that situation. We all going to go through struggles, y'all. That's why Lord Jesus said, love others as though he loved us. It's all about love. We're going to fail at times, but continue to grow from it. Don't continue to return back to it. And I, I'm talking to myself too. Some days it's hard. Some days we don't know whether we're coming or going. So don't allow the devil to beat you down with failure. God can use it all as long as you continue to 
believe in him. No matter what you're going through, continue to believe in Lord Jesus. Don't allow failure to take you out of the presence of God. And we must be careful about what we say to ourselves. You're here for a reason. The only way that reason becomes alive in our life is when we give it to the one who granted us a second life. And that's Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus is our purpose for living. So keep going. I pray this bless you in Jesus name. Amen.